Good evening and welcome to this episode of Greatest Somerville. Today is January 24th, 2017. I'm Joe Lynch. My guests tonight are Brian Zip, the executive director of the Somerville Media Center, or commonly known as SCAT TV, and Dave Ortega, the programming coordinator and production assistant for SCAT TV. At our recent annual meeting, it was announced that the organization you've all come to know and love as SCAT TV will be marketing under a new organizational name, that being Somerville Media Center, or SMC. SMC will be the parent organization, if you will, for a Somerville Community Access Television, SCAT TV, Boston Free Radio, BFR, and Somerville Neighborhood News, SNN. Brian Zip assumed the executive director position in April of 2016, and Dave Ortega joined us in November of 2016. It is my pleasure to welcome them to the set of Greater Somerville. Welcome, gentlemen. Thanks for having us. Are we all looking a little relaxed today and a little coming off of a terrific annual meeting and SCAT TV awards? We are. We are. We are. Hence our plaid, our black, and our gray. <laughs> We're not in vibrant colors because it's a rainy day here in January in Somerville. So tell us, Brian, I want to start with you. You've, you've gotten your feet wet and your hair wet and everything else down here in uh, Union Square at SCAT TV. But one of the big announcements we did at this year's annual meeting at SCAT TV was announce a little bit of a name change or introduction of a new name. Yeah, uh, and, and right or well said. Thank you, Brian. Um, Ultimately, this is something that uh, predated me coming on board. This has uh, about a, been a little over a year in the works as far as the, the SCAT TV board looking to um, sort of rebrand itself in terms of staying current and relevant um, and, and really kind of navigating the fact that media in general has exploded. And uh, obviously, we're trying to evolve to embrace all of that. Um, so gone are the days of strictly access television, um, and that's actually one of the, the words in SCAT TV, uh, Somerville Community Access Television. Um, and, and realistically, what we're trying to do is, um, by using this, this name, come up with something that encompasses uh, and embraces all forms of media that we, we do here, um, in addition to SCAT TV Channel 3, which is still a a core part of what we do. Dave does the programming for, for said television channel. We have uh, BFR Radio, which is our, our web-based radio program. We have our marquee news gathering arm, Somerville Neighborhood News, uh, which is actually undergoing a, a, an evolution in and of itself with uh, Peter Levine. Um, in addition to that, we're taking full advantage of new media in terms of the web and social media presence. Uh, our channel, both for radio and television, the content is streamed uh, live on our website. Uh, it's also streamed live on Facebook Live, depending on uh, what the nature of your, your particular show is. Uh, we also have uh, YouTube streaming, live streaming, actually. Just last uh, yesterday afternoon, we did that with Tufts University, doing the uh, Martin Luther King Symposium, uh, doing a, a live stream from there using um, sort of the newfangled uh, media. So uh, the idea is we're not losing any of the old names, especially in the case of Somerville Community Access Television. We've built goodwill with the community for more than 30 years. And the last thing you want to do is throw out the, the baby with the bath of water, so to speak. And we are <clears> one <throat> of the oldest community access television stations in New England at this point. Absolutely. And you know, just for a reference point back to the viewers who are going to be watching the show, when we started, it was strictly live television or pre-recorded television. Mm -hmm. There was no such thing as the internet. We did not have a radio station. And we certainly didn't have a news division. But, you know, morphing that, Brian, over the years, what's happened is we're keeping up with technology. We are no longer a single entity of a television station. Correct. With radio, with internet, with importing other people's work, and with the teaching that goes on down here. You know, we'll talk about a little bit later about the programs that we have, the youth program under Heather McCormick. You know, we are a community center for all types of media, hence the name change. Exactly, exactly. And we're not unique in that standpoint that many many of the community access 
stations that started out as a television station have now morphed into the same thing. Oh, absolutely. Actually, my background where I came from in Michigan, we, we part of what I came from in that experience was doing a name change. For 28 years, we were known as Community Access Center of Kalamazoo, and uh, ultimately we did a name change to Public Media Network. But again, the idea that we're embracing all media and moving away from that term access, which uh, depending on what generation you're from, late 70s, early 80s, you know, access, that, that term is sort of dates itself to that. Mm -hmm. um, and actually when I use the term, or when I date myself using the Wayne's World references to what this place does, <clears throat> again, Wayne and Garth uh, existed prior to the internet and prior to all this uh, explosion of the media convergence. Um, and, and that's one of the things we're trying to do is definitely embrace the, the rest of, of media and keep up with it. And it should be noted that we, you know, we have gotten and accumulated many awards over the years, this television station for excellence in terms of the programming that we do. And that's where, you know, we'll talk to Dave a little bit more about what types of programming we're doing. You know, in the old days, if you watch some of the archival film that we every now and then resurrect from the back of the closet, um, a lot of that stuff looked pretty hokey. You know, it, it looked like Wayne and Garth were doing it from the sofa in the basement. But w as technology has changed, so has SCAT TV. Absolutely. Incorporating BFR into our family, um, SNN into our family. It now mandates that we have to keep up with what people are looking for. It's, no, you know, especially with younger folks, and I give a lot of credit to Heather McCormick um, at the awards ceremony there was an enormous amount of youth in the audience with their parents. I mean, they had come to see their work. And these kids are a lot more savvy than I am. I don't know about you two. I know you two, yeah. how to do it, but they're a lot more savvy than I am. So let's go on just for a little bit. So moving forward, we're going to softly roll out, you know, the Somerville Media Center name. Absolutely. Um, I know that you've been in touch with um, some of the local media, print media. Yep. And they're gonna be carrying that on uh, Wednesday, hopefully on Thursday this week. But um, let's go back to one step backwards in terms of actually what precipitated the name change. Was it the case that we were offering two more types of media, uh, media broadcasting with BFR and with SNN? Or was it just the necessity that we had to move away from being the single entity of TV? Uh, I think it's a function of both, actually. Both. Um, I know part of the... Uh, Part of this process was uh, working with Annie Smith of uh, Durable Creative, who has been a consultant. Yeah, that consultant in. Uh, yep. from from uh, day one, and part of part of that um, consulting included uh, doing some uh, surveying of our membership and of the community at large to again kind of navigate what the the perception of this place was, and and I think as in response to the fact that the name. Um, brought up certain expectations which were um, kind of limited in that, you know, you think access television, you know, we're sort of pigeonholed there, even though, you know, there's so much more that we do. Um, and by virtue of the fact, too, that we have the radio, um, we do all the web stuff, and, and, and um, you continue to expand with uh, our other programs. It, you know, just kind of a natural, um, yeah, just sort of a natural evolution in terms of the need to um, add this sort of umbrella name that uh, embraces sort of all the activities. And we're going to be offering a lot more classes as well. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Part of our, you know, ultimately this place is a service, or you know, we're a service that we provide to the, the community of, of Greater Somerville. And I like that name. <laughs> there you go. Um, but the, uh, it, from that standpoint though, you part of our or, you know, response to those, those needs from the community or those requests from the community has been uh, a much broader focus on the media arts. So it's not just, I need to know specifically the technology to handle um, this piece of equipment. It's moved much more into the media arts realm. You know, we're, right now we're uh, in the middle of another documentary workshop series. Again, you know, going beyond just here's how to use a camera. This is you know, talking about uh, you know, shot composition, uh, developing your narrative Editing. You know, in terms of, of doing all of that so that you're, you're really telling a story. And so it, it's moving beyond just teaching mechanics 
of, of using equipment to uh, really moving into the, the arts aspect of, of media. I want to I want to move over to Dave for to just one second. And Dave, your background you you come out of a media background. Can you talk a little bit? I, because I know people have met you have, uh, as they've traveled through the studio down here. But you're also very much an illustrator, yes. a comic il, a comic illustrator. How do I refer to uh, it? A cartoonist. Cartoonist. Yeah. yeah. Um, talk a little bit about that before we get into why we pay you here at Sketch TV. <laughs> sure. Uh, well, the um, well, the media aspect of, uh, that you mentioned, uh, I come from uh, 12 years of being at the National Center for Jewish Film at Brandeis University, yep. and uh, I specialized in, I, I, I had my hand in a lot of things from web design to graphic design to customer service to office maintenance, um, just being there for so long, uh, as you would in any place. Uh, you just know all these different things. You wear many hats. But I, I did specialize in uh, DVD distribution um, and promotion. Um, and so where I left them, they were on the cusp of uh, going from DVD uh, to streaming, to try and find a revenue with uh, streaming their content. Mm -hmm. um, so I wish them luck with that. Um, and I, I uh, came here to SCAT TV uh, in November and uh, came on as the new programming coordinator and production assistant. Um, uh, going back to the uh, cartooning that I do, um, I am a, a cartoonist. I've been doing that professionally for about 10 years. Um, I go to different um, uh, uh, comics fairs um, throughout the country. Most recently at Comic Con here in Boston? Uh, no, no. Uh, most recently at uh, Comic Arts Brooklyn in November. Ah. Um, and uh, it, it's just, you know, setting up for a day and letting people have at your stuff and hobnobbing with colleagues and and so I think part of what uh, what what attracted me to SCAT TV and what SCAT TV uh, uh, sought me out for was the uh, storytelling aspect of all of that and um, the how how being a storyteller in one medium um, can can translate to uh, storytelling in other mediums. And it's a graceful integration of those two that you can do. Once a storyteller, always a storyteller, yes. without whatever the medium. So right now here at SCAT TV, no, I wanted to touch on that because if you've never seen some of David's work, you have to, because I know you have some work online. I've seen some of it. And then you also had uh, introduced, as far as SCAT TV, the Academy Award uh, representation yes. of our new award, which was cool. I loved the blending of what typically people associate with an award, which is that ambiguous male torso of yeah. the Oscars, with our um, part of our new logo, which incorporates the Prospect Hill Tower, and then a microphone, right. which indicates both parts of our, all three parts of our, our journey down here of television, radio, and uh, news. So I think, going back to Brian's point, you know, I had to explain it to somebody on oh, Facebook yeah. over the weekend because they had seen it and they said, is SCAT TV still an entity? And I, I kind of prompted them to think of it this way, that, that the old SCAT TV is growing as such is that we now have three divisions. We have the television division, the radio division, and the news division. So if people can think of it that way, Dave is gonna be taking care of most of the programming on Television and radio, or is that, or is the radio part of it done differently? Uh, purely television. Purely. Yeah, television Heather Mack uh, is is uh, the radio, uh, Boston Free Radio. Yep. Yeah. So let me give you another compliment. This is not to, so you can put this in your back pocket and ask for a raise. Sure. This is for, purely because <laughs> I admire, you know, being down here for so long. I come from the days of, you know, static one camera, and uh, all kinds of problems with broadcasting whether it's through our friends at Comcast or RCN. But I've noticed the change since you've been here with um, basically the smooth transition of program to program, the importation of a lot of outside content that's coming in, and how happy the producers look <laughs> <laughs> when their show is on time, on schedule, and repeat showings. And that's part of your bailiwick to make sure, I think, that the producers are happy with their content being shown, that finding new sources of content for the television station 
and making sure that we're not just a static screen mm -hmm. um, in the 24-7 that we broadcast. So if you could, for the folks at home, just talk a little bit more about you know, where our programs come from and how you try to seamlessly move them into our programming. Sure. Um, well, uh, the, most of our SCAT TV produced content comes from our member producers um, who either have a live show um, here in the hot set or uh, in our larger main studio. Um, and so those get shown and then re-aired uh, until a new episode is made. Um, so that is uh, primarily where the SCAT TV content comes from. Mm -hmm. There's other SCAT TV uh, member produced shows that aren't necessarily made in these facilities, but um, you know, people... But they may have been edited here. Sure. Or, yep. Yeah, uh, people use the facilities or equipment uh, to... Uh, they, they record with, with the equipment that's available to them and then uh, come back and use the uh, editing equipment that is at their disposal mm -hmm. um, as a member. Um, and for a mere 40 bucks? Yep. For a mere for, $40 yeah. a year, it's 40, a 40. It is, it's a deal. <laughs> Get it now before we go up. Yeah, yeah and <laughs> sorry, it, David. It, it is sale. a deal. Uh, just, yeah, in terms of the, the editing uh, uh, equipment, you know, the licensing for an individual can be um, astronomical. Um, and so, you know, that alone. Um, as well as the, the professional equipment that is at, at, at members' disposal. And the staff. And the staff, the, yep. the helpful staff that is, and experienced staff that is here to uh, help troubleshoot, offer support, answer questions, um, all of that. Um, so uh, those, those two sources for SCAT TV produced content. And then, uh, as you mentioned, we do get content from outside of SCAT TV, other, other uh, community access centers. Um, we are part of a few different uh, networks um, that, from which we can pull con uh, shows made in other places. Our, our national is the Alliance, the, the Alliance for Community Television. Uh, yeah, we're a member of that, but yeah. uh, you're thinking like the Teleview. Yeah, it's um, Teleview Connect. Um, and it that's where other access stations or public service announcements are gathered. Yep. And then we have access to those and we can play those on our mm -hmm. station. Yep. And it's reciprocal. We can make our content available to them as well. Very good point for the public to know is that, you know, if you get something that's going viral on YouTube, it may have had its start here at SCAT TV. Yeah. Because a lot of our producers, you know, SCAT TV also offers um, the avenue for producers such as myself or other people. How do we get beyond SCAT TV? And, you know, the staff down here has been, I can't speak well enough about them. They have been integral in, you know, producers like me who are not tech savvy to get up onto YouTube, to have a, a wider distribution for our shows than just somebody who's sitting at home on their couch watching Channel 3 or Channel, what's the other channel that we have for RCN? It, it's still 3 for, three? for both of those. Okay. Um, you can see how tech savvy I am. <laughs> So, David, I'm interested, uh, you know, you, you as the programming coordinator director, y you actually make the decision on what kind of content is going to be shown in between shows. Mm -hmm. Is that, that's a true statement, fair, yes. fair statement? Yeah. So I have noticed, and I do have to compliment you, is that one of the pieces or two of the pieces that you've been showing is about assistance to veterans. And I actually got a compliment from one of the veterans organizations about that's the first time they ever remember those types of public service announcements being shown on SCAT TV. So kudos to you for, you know, widening our circle in the types of things that we do promote. Brian uh, ha allowed me the freedom to, to pull from all these sources and, uh, and, and trust in a, in a certain... Um, um, vision based on um, SCAT TV's own vision mm -hmm. and, and uh, the vision at large. I'm just going to keep on with the compliments because <laughs> I, I'll tell you, you know, I have been pushing for a while for music to be part of our community bulletin board because there's nothing more irritating to me than to sit there and watch something <laughs> with no sound. Right. I don't care if it's chickens in the background, but give me some sound. And you have been choosing the music that's being be, being played on right. SCAT TV. Well, that again, that was a collaborative uh, effort. Uh, Brian uh, and Erica Jones, our uh, outreach um, 
what is her title exactly? Outreach. Outreach. Yeah, director um, of Outreach. Director of Outreach. Yeah. Um, who, if you haven't met Erica, uh, <laughs> she she's I don't the think perfect a viewer of yeah. this program <laughs> who has never met Erica Jones. She is the perfect ambassador for SCAT TV. Um, and um, they they mentioned to me that this was something that uh, people have been wanting for a while, and so it. it fell onto me to figure out how to make that happen. And thank you, Erica, for listening. <laughs> and so um, so one of the 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 entities that we sought out was Union Square Playlist, who put out a CD of music made by people who uh, in, in some way have either lived in Union Square at one time or continue to do to live and work in Union Square. And so I was in touch with them to see if, if they were on board with um, allowing us to play their, their music. Um, uh, and there was, and they, were, they were really enthusiastic sure. about it. Sure, marketing galore. Yeah. 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 And um, so, um, yeah, we, we recorded uh, tracks with uh, one of the producers who came in and offered uh, information about each track and musician, recorded it. Um, and then we uh, edited it so that it, it would also all play kind of seamlessly as, as, yeah. as the music played on the community bulletin board. Absolutely terrific idea because it is still community related mm -hmm. and it's media yeah. and it's part of our mission. So any of you musicians out there in Somerville, if you're looking for some free publicity, Greatest Somerville is looking for a theme song. <laughs> so how's that for a plug? <laughs> there, you there you go. Dave, thanks. Let's, Brian, let's move back to you for a minute and just talk a little bit more about the future direction of the new and improved Somerville Media, Media Center. Center. SMC. 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 Let's say it three times together. SMC. SMC. There yeah. you go. All right. So a little bit more, you know, taking it into the future. I know that we have plans. Um, the board's going to be meeting with you about the, you know, two, three, five-year plan, whatever right, you have right. in mind. So without revealing too much, let's talk a little bit about the next year, this year, 2017 sure, sure. to come. Um, from a, an equipment hardware standpoint, um, we, at the, by the end of this past year, 2016, uh, we acquired a, a new uh, camcorder, the uh, Canon XA35. Um, Equipment and, upgrades. Yeah, and yep. plan to get uh, several more of those. Um, I know we have a lot of folks who like using the DSLRs, but there's still uh, plenty of folks who like using the camcorder experience. And for the types of shoots, certain types of shoots, it makes more sense to go with the camcorder just because if you hit record, the thing will record as long as your memory card has, has memory on it. Whereas the DSLRs are um, uh, do it in spurts. Yeah, um, I think. 25 minutes for our, our 7Ds, but again, so if you're doing something longer, you can't leave it unattended because you're going to have to can, hit the record button. Can again, you see this thing. blank look on my face right <laughs> <about> now? Because <laughs> you're getting so technical with me, Brian. You know I have trouble even putting the mics on. But <clears throat> what you're saying is that yes. we are upgrading equipment, equipment fast. Equipment upgrades, um, absolutely. Um, the other thing is we are, our membership is, is really starting to take off to the point where um, we're having to do a lot more juggling. You know, gone are the days where if we double book something, it's like, oh, well, here, we'll put you in this That's other okay. room. We can go someplace we else. Don't, yeah. We don't have that, that right. going on anymore. Um, uh, as of October, we went live with the Isaac uh, reservation system, which is our schedule and reservation system for um, keeping track of things and letting us uh, avoid doing that double booking. But it's a good problem to have. Oh, absolutely. It's a good problem to have absolutely. because as we increase the membership, there is more demand for the studios. And quite frankly, we only have three studios down here. Yep. We have what we call the big studio, the hot set That's that we're recording in today, and the radio studio. Right. So jokingly, let's go back to uh, you know the future of SCAT TV. I was asked, or at Somerville Media Center, I was asked about it the other night. You know, we had a jam-packed crowd here for the awards night and I was asked about it you know do you guys usually do your award ceremony in such a tight space and to much credit for you and your staff and you know especially with the advent of um, many many more youth programs it, I couldn't help but notice the amount of young kids in the audience who are taking advantage of all the offerings that we have down here at the media center and their parents were there 
and their parents were so appreciative that the kids were getting an award. But I think one of the most appreciative people was the mayor himself when he came in and, you know, he's been present at many of the award ceremonies. He's been on my show. He's been on other people's shows down here. But he was quite taken aback by the amount of people that were here. And jokingly, he said to me, I suppose you're going to be asking for greater space, which leads me to the next place. Union Square is undergoing an enormous amount of re revitalization, and that will only continue for the next 10, 15 years. We are in a city-owned building. Do you think that at some point we can give, you know, the membership assurances that we're going to be here for three years, five years, ten years? I mean, what's the plan at this point? Um, I'm, I'm trying to get a, a number nailed down for what the horizon is for specifically being here in this building. Um, it's hard to say, though, just because we're at the, the end of that accordion effect Right. as far as the Green Line extension being built and so forth. Um, and uh, as such, though, there is a sense of inevitability about the fact that at some point we will be relocating somewhere. Right. Um, I know there's a, a strong preference among our membership to remain in Union Square if possible. Um, however, <clears throat> you know, Somerville is a, a nice compact uh, hamlet so to speak. Right. So right. Um, anywhere within Somerville is certainly accessible to everyone else in Somerville. And um, again, my background in, in Michigan, we worked with uh, several access centers that had very different models, all of which are, are possible things. Um, uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana, which is their access center as part of the library system, you know, is one potential model. I know the board has already done some research previously on, on this uh, scenario in, in general, just having to move because uh, it's been a, a long time coming and at some point right. uh, we're going to have to, to take more steps on it. Um, also worked with the Access Center where they're um, definitely done in conjunction with the school or the high school. Um, actually, I have a Concord um, the Access Center here in Massachusetts, uh, Concord Carlisle. Mm -hmm. um, they have a new facility that opened about a year and a half ago with the new high school. Right. Um, this, the, and the important part of that one is they have their own entrance, so you're not beholden to right. the school hours right. um, because most and of what we do here happens after work. Um, and, and, and as you know, though, Brian, the other part of it was the money. Yep. Was that the high school... The high school in Concord Carlisle did not actually pay for that build out. It was the studio itself or the, the access center who had to pay for that. So we are faced with the same dilemma. Yep. You know, how do we pay for moving forward? But uh, for right now, I thought it was a, a great, um, a nice compliment to us that the mayor is recognizing that upgrade of our space, whether we stay here and put glass elevators to get us up and down. <laughs> I don't know what the answer is. I don't think the mayor knows at this point, but I just wanted to make sure, you know, because I was asked by a couple of people, are you guys sure. going to stay here because of the limited space? Well, hopefully in the build out of Union Square, we go out to about, um, what's good for you? 40,000 square feet? 50,000 uh, square it feet? Would, uh, it would be nice. Is it that would be good nice. for you? And Dave, you'll have your own, uh, your own office. You won't have to um, share it with <laughs> share other people other who people. bring <laughs> germs in. All right. So that's an inside reference. Listen, I don't know how much time we've had, but certainly if we have time, we're going to roll a little bit of tape on the annual awards ceremony. Sure. But I want to thank you, Brian. I know you're busy. Thank you. Dave, you are very busy. Thank so you. Thank you for coming on to Greater Somerville. All right. Pleasure. Thanks again. My guests have been Brian Zip, Executive Director for Somerville Media Center. Did I say that right? Yeah, you got it. There you go. And Dave Ortega, the Programming Coordinator and Technical Assistant extraordinaire down here at Scott TV. As always, stay safe, stay informed. See you next time.